<clears throat> so um, cancer is a disease of the genome, and um, uh, although arguably you can make that statement about a lot of diseases, part of what makes uh, cancer fascinating is that there are two distinct ways in which that statement is true. Um, like many other diseases, uh, there are germline risk variants that uh, confer a lifetime risk to developing cancer, um, but there are also somatic alterations that develop in the uh, cancer tissue that directly contribute to tumorigenesis, metastasis, dr uh, drug resistance, and other phenotypes. Uh, the heritability of cancer has been known for a while from a f a family and uh, twin studies, uh, and it varies quite a bit from uh, tumor type to tumor type. Uh, we know that the inheritance uh, uh, and the heritability of cancer is not simple, and, it, and it's mediated very likely with a complex polygenic uh, inheritance. Uh, part of the uh, genetic revolutions of the 80s and 90s was uh, the use of positional cloning and family studies to discover rare, highly penetrant uh, variants that, uh, that uh, mediate uh, familial cancer syndromes, uh, and the sort of um, highlights of these were uh, the discovery of P53 and leaf romani syndrome, uh, APC and familial uh, colon cancer, MLH, MSH uh, uh, genes in uh, Lynch syndrome, uh, BRCA1, BRCA2, and familial uh, breast cancer, and, uh, and uh, RB1 retinal blastoma. Um, together, though, all these uh, high risk of uh, high penetrance variants uh, explain a, a small percentage of, of the heritable risk for, uh, for various tumor types. Uh, more recently, uh, the emergence of uh, genome-wide association studies examining common uh, uh, SNP variation in uh, case and control cohorts have yielded a host of loci in both cancer and non-cancer uh, uh, disease analysis. And um, sorry, can I use this for a laser pointer, or is this? Sorry. Oh, here. Oh, here's the pointer. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. And uh, so uh, over the last five years, uh, there have been a number of GWAS, cancer GWASs that have yielded uh, a, a over 300 loci in over 20 cancer types. Um, and uh, together, uh, the, uh, these loci can explain as much as, uh, as sorry, 10, 23, and 6% of the heritable risk for breast, prostate, and colorectal cancer, uh, respectively. Um, so here's a, here's a sort of a, 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 a large scale. A uh, picture from a, a review in 2010 of, of, of cancer uh, GWAS loci, and we see that there are a number of these loci around the genome. Uh, the majority of, of the uh, GWAS loci that have been discovered uh, are, are for uh, uh, prostate, uh, pancreatic, lung cancer, uh, hematopoietic tumors, and breast cancer. Um, a lot of these uh, loci uh, lie in endogenic regions, and uh, their, their uh, role in uh, disease has not been functionally yet uh, elucidated. Um, in familial uh, germline loci, there's a lot of precedence for, for uh, uh, genes that are mutated in the germline families, but also are somatically altered in, in cancer. Uh, and uh, of course, among these are P53, APC, RB1, CDKN2A, VHL, NF1. Um, a lot of these are tumor suppressor uh, uh, genes which undergo a two-hit alteration where, whereby they're inactivated in the uh, germline and then, and then undergo a second hit. Uh, in the tumor tissue uh, to, to become lost and uh, uh, to undergo loss of function. <clears throat> um, so we uh, decided to examine uh, the interplay of common variant uh, loci discovered in GWAS studies and somatic copy number alterations to examine uh, this hypothesis on the genome scale. Um, so we uh, uh, took 297 cancer loci uh, uh, documented in the NHGRI GWAS database uh, uh, from over uh, 80 uh, GWASs, and then uh, it took a list of, uh, uh, from a recently published study by Bruchim and colleagues at the Broad uh, in 2010, uh, examining uh, somatic copy, no copy number alterations across over 3,000 tumors uh, in over uh, 20 tumor types. Uh, and this study yielded uh, 258 uh, 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 copy number peak regions. Uh, and our approach was uh, quite simple to basically examine the overlap between these two regions of loci and determine whether it was significant uh, against a null model built uh, using uh, permutations. Um, so briefly, the, the way we assembled the data was uh, uh, obtain these loci from the uh, GWAS database. These are usually reported as a single SNP. Uh, 
we of course had to handpick the, the cancer-related GWASs, uh, and then for each SNP uh, defined a locus uh, uh, using the linkage disequilibrium neighborhood of that SNP. And uh, with that uh, sort of uh, collapsing loci into unique regions, we found 219 unique GWAS loci uh, covering 1.1% of the mappable genome. Um, on the SCNA side, we took all the loci uh, reported in the Bruchim and colleagues study in uh, 2010, uh, and, uh, and uh, basically we took the pan tumor analysis combined with all the uh, uh, tumor type sub analyses and found 258 total SCNA peak regions comprising 8.4 percent of the mappable, mappable genome, and that included, uh, sorry, 198 amplification hotspots and 67 deletion peak regions. So crossing these two loci, we see the plot um, shown here, and this is a, a, a genome-wide uh, plot uh, where the uh, uh, GWAS uh, uh, loci are represented. They lie on the chromosome as, as these little dots, and then we see the SCNA peak regions hovering over uh, each chromosome, and then the intersecting or overlapping loci are shown in red. Um, and so uh, among these uh, uh, intersecting loci, we have um, uh, a lot of uh, known cancer genes as well as uh, novel loci. So to determine the significance of this overlap, we per performed a, uh, a genome-wide permutation, actually a number of uh, permutations, and what we found was a strikingly significant uh, overlap in, uh, in uh, GWAS loci and uh, frequently uh, altered or frequently amplified uh, uh, regions of the genome and cancer. Um, in contrast, when we analyzed, uh, when we compared cancer GWAS loci against uh, commonly deleted peak regions, we, we, we saw the, the distribution of uh, overlap as sh shown here in the, uh, in the left plot, and uh, following permutation, we found actually that this intersection was not significant. Um, and so uh, this is quite interesting. Um, uh, we pursued a, a, a second uh, line, a sort of orthogonal uh, line of uh, 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 investigating this uh, overlap by comparing uh, cancer uh, uh, related loci versus non cancer related GWAS regions. And we found that, that cancer related GWAS regions were enriched, significantly enriched in, uh, in uh, overlap with amplification um, uh, uh, peak regions, but again, not, uh, uh, did not frequently overlap with uh, deletion SCNAs. Um, so one one uh, one uh, uh, feature of the uh, uh, GWAS findings across all the um, uh, uh, cancer uh, uh, germline analyses is that there's a hot spot of association uh, where there's a multiple loci and pr prostate cancer and, and, uh, and uh, GBM and other uh, cancer types uh, on the region of 8Q24 near the MIC locus. Um, so to examine whether our, our results were robust to the removal of this uh, region, which is also frequently known to be amplified, we, uh, we did a separate analysis where we excluded these loci and we still found a significant colocalization of, uh, of these amplification peak regions with, uh, 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 with cancer GWAS loci outside of the MIC locus. Um, we applied this uh, 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 an analysis to uh, different uh, subtype analyses and we also saw a significant association in the uh, lung, uh, lung and hematopoietic uh, uh, overlap with lung and hematopoietic uh, peak regions uh, and, and, uh, and cancer GWAS loci. So this, these results uh, show an uh, interesting uh, correlation or co localization and, and they could be explained very simply um, by regions of, uh, or, or, or genes that, that tend to undergo uh, uh, somatic alteration frequently in some patients and then in other patients are, are uh, altered, uh, 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 are mutated in, in the germline genome and confer lifetime risk. But it doesn't really suggest any kind of uh, 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 germline somatic interplay. For example, uh, in uh, commonly the, the classic model, of the two-hit model of uh, tumor suppressor loss uh, uh, involves a, uh, a germline inactivation followed by a, a somatic alteration that, that results in loss of function. Um, so we wanted to ask this question of whether a germline SNP status actually confers risk for specific uh, somatic alterations, in this case uh, amplifications. And, and a really interesting precedent uh, for this was uh, published a few years ago where uh, a common variant uh, SNP conferring risk to myeloproliferative disease uh, located in, in JAK2 uh, actually was shown to, to be pre, uh, predisposed to the development of, 
of the somatic point mutation in JAK2 uh, in, in these uh, same neoplasms. And what was really fascinating was that the, the actual risk-conferring germline common variant SNP would occur on the exact same, uh, on, the, on the same haplotype as the somatic uh, mutation. Um, so we wanted to uh, pr pursue this question in the context of uh, copy number alteration. So how, how would we detect this? Well, if, uh, if, a, <coughs> if we have a heterozygous SNP in a tumor, uh, uh, in, a in a patient's tumor tissue, this is a germline heterozygous SNP, and a, and a tumor decides to undergo a copy number alteration, in this case amplification, at that locus, well, it might sometimes choose the C locus, uh, the locus containing the C SNP, to amplify, but other times it may choose the locus containing the A SNP to amplify. Um, and if the tumor is sort of uh, uh, equivocal or does not care about the status of these of of, of that germline allele, well then it'll uh, it'll amplify these uh, these two different alleles at an equal proportion. However, if there's something special that it sees on that C allele that may be um, it likes, it's positively selected for, then we'll see it amplifying that C allele time and time again. Um, and so the way that you can test this is something using something called the allelic distortion test, and this was first proposed by uh, Dual and colleagues in bioinformatics in 2009. Basically, at each heterozygous SNP that undergoes a copy number alteration, we can measure uh, how frequently one allele versus the other allele is amplified or deleted. Um, and then we can test the significant deviation of this frequency from one half just using a chi-squared distribution or, or, or a Fisher's exact test. So basically, if we see that the tumor amplifies uh, an allele in uh, uh, allele A in, in 30 out of 35 hets, and that may be evidence for some kind of allelic bias and a, a germline somatic interplay. Um, so we examined this in several data sets, in, including the uh, original uh, GCM data from, from, from which the, uh, global cancer, the global cancer map data and uh, TCGA data using 6.0 SNP arrays, and we were sort of disappointed to find that zero of these 36 uh, loci, cancer GWAS loci that intersect the somatic amplification peaks showed s significant allelic distortion. Um, however, we applied this um, a, a scan genome-wide, and we, we found a, a, a significant uh, a, a allelic distortion at uh, 11 Q13. Um, this um, this allelic distortion occurred, uh, uh, zooming in on this locus, we found that this is uh, a SNP that lied a, a, a 100 kb uh, 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 upstream of the uh, cyclin D1 locus and near the uh, MyOV uh, gene, um, and uh, examining the individual events that contribute to this signal, um, we found uh, that uh, f uh, 44 out of the 50 uh, tumors that amplify this uh, SNP choose the C allele over the T allele. And we can see here the, the, the individual tumors that support the signal, uh, and we see that uh, across many tumor types we're, we're, be, uh, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, many tumor types that amplify this locus, uh, which is, of course, a frequently amplified region, um, and it's uh, uh, and they tend to choose this uh, uh, C allele over the T allele. We applied the same analysis in the TCGA 6.0 SNP data uh, uh, spanning over 2,000 tumors. And again, we saw many tumor types, ovarian, breast, uh, lung, uh, amplifying this locus and choosing this uh, C allele over this T allele. This was strikingly significant. We saw the same effect in the uh, Broden of Artist Cancer Cell Line Encyclopedia. This is a, 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 a a set of uh, over uh, 900 cell lines that have been profiled with both expression, copy number, sequencing, we, we saw the, uh, uh, the same effect, which was, which was quite significant. Um, so this is an interesting uh, 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 result, uh, partly because it, it does actually lie uh, uh, in obviously a frequently amplified uh, region. Uh, it, it, it lies not too far from a GWAS peak, but does not lie in, actu in an actual uh, 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 significant um, GWAS region. So the question is, what, what is the biology that may be driving this? Um, we clearly see that these tumors tend to preferentially amplify the C allele uh, over the T allele uh, at this locus. Does this, does this C allele, germline C allele, carry some kind of selective advantage that the, t that the tumor is really uh, going after? Uh, for example, is that cyclin D1 associated uh, that's, that's nearby more expressible or somehow has a selectively advantageous uh, genotype? Or perhaps maybe there's some kind of um, uh, interaction with the amplification machinery that maybe alters that local amplification rate, somatic amplification rate, and that phenotype is carried somewhere on, you know, by that C allele or is tagged by that C allele. So uh, we took some steps to examine this hypothesis, looking at the uh, 
uh, uh, um, uh, cell line encyclopedia and examined uh, the uh, interaction of the uh, allelic status of, of, uh, of the SNP with total copy number and expression to examine whether it was an expression quantitative trait locus uh, uh, at this at the SNP, and we found a, a mild but significant effect whereby with increasing um, doses of, of allele C, when we control for total copy number, we actually see increased uh, uh, expression of, uh, of, of cyclin uh, D1. We do not see this uh, EQTL with any of the other genes in this locus. So um, in summary, we see a significant overlap of germline GWAS uh, pe uh, peaks uh, or, or uh, loci and SCNA peak regions across uh, cancer types, and this, this uh, is pre predominantly with amplifications, also what I didn't show in amplifications plus deletions, but not with deletions only. Um, as far as we know, this is the first evidence for germ genome-wide um, co-localization of germline susceptibility variants and somatically altered loci, and um, cyclin D1 uh, uh, is an interesting candidate uh, cis uh, somatic trait locus, or cis STL, um, and, uh, and we're investigating that further, um, and I'll take any questions, thanks. Oh, and sorry, <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, my collaborators on this, uh, on, on this effort, uh, Scott Carter, uh, Ramin Bruhim, uh, Craig Mermel, uh, Gadi Getz, and uh, my mentor, Matthew Meyerson. Thanks. Thank you, Marcin. That was a great, great talk. Questions? Oh. Susan? Hi. Um, why did you choose to just use the heterozygotes and not uh, use the two homozygotes as well. Uh, so the the um, in the setting of the uh, of a heterozygous SNP, we can come up with a uh, a simple statistical test that would um, uh, uh, determine uh, some some sort of uh, uh, selective advantage that or, or or some some sort of effect. I think we've also so that test I think is is a, a good test because it's less, uh, so the, the, all, the other alternative is to use a, a, a trend test or sort of a, a case control test where we look at amplified and non-amplified, uh, or patients that are amplifying versus non-amplifying that locus and uh, f compare, for example, minor allele frequencies. Um, that test is, is, tends to be more prone to population stratification um, and, uh, and uh, yields a lot of, uh, yields messier results, although it is potentially um, powerful. So both are uh, good um, uh, ways of approaching this problem. Um, the, the ADT is more similar to the TDT in germline genomics, which, which again is also less prone to population stratification, but is perhaps less powerful, requires more samples. But we've actually tried both. We just uh, uh, achieved cleaner results with this test. Yeah, just a question. Have you taken the copy number variation into account, or have you considered that as a, another possible uh, way that you could get amplifications or deletions? Oh, germline so copy number. Uh, yeah, ger germline uh, polymorphism. Right. So in, 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 in the context of, of this data, we are only looking at somatic copy uh, number events. But that, that certainly could be um, uh, uh, another uh, driver of this kind of uh, effect. And I mean, we're only looking also at germline uh, single nucleotide polymorphism. A, a more general application of this uh, strategy would be to look at large uh, other kinds of somatic variants and other kinds of germline variants, uh, and that's certainly a, a great direction of additional exploration. I have a quick question. Uh, so for the GWAS peaks, have you attempted to further stratify them by looking at the heterozygotes and uh, trying to discern whether or not they, the mode of inheritance is dominant versus recessive among the GWAS peaks, and then repeating your analysis to see if there's a difference. That would be a great analysis. Um, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the, the, the GWAS data that we're using, we don't have the, the underlying genotypes. Those uh, are either um, not accessible or require additional, uh, uh, we, we haven't <laughs> been able to access yet. So uh, uh, definitely that's a, that would be an interesting analysis. Also analyzing uh, the summary stats of, of some of these GWASs to examine uh, a low side that perhaps fell under the genome-wide significance threshold but, but happened to co-localize with a copy number, uh, somatic copy number region would be an interesting way of finding additional uh, 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 germline effects. Okay, thank you. Thanks.